All right, no further ado. It's quite a lot of questions, so 58 is the first one. Um, let's see, what's the value of X? So here is, I mean, it's more for you to practice in terms of uh, the absolute value. So we have X minus, and we have to subtract those two, and then subtract those two, and then take the absolute value. So 47 minus 74 is negative 27. And then 132 minus 231 is negative 99. All right, so now I can take the absolute value. So we get x minus the absolute value of negative 27 is 27, plus the absolute value of negative 99, which is 99, equals 28. I can combine those two. 99 and 27 is 72 positive equals 28. Now we subtract 72 from each side. And x equals 28 minus 72, which equals negative 44. Okay, 59. I will make that a little... So 59 says, what is y minus z? Well, if this is 145, I know that 145 plus z equals 180. So 145 plus z equals 180 minus 145 from each side. And we have that z equals 35. So this is 35. Okay. Now, if that's 35, you know, vertical angles, this guy here is 35. Now we know that if that's 35, then because this is 90, 35 plus y equals 90. So y plus 35 equals 90. And we do minus 35 on each side. And y equals 55. So that's still not the answer because they want y minus z. So y is 55. Then you subtract 35, we get 20. <clears throat> 61 is this one it's uh, interest rate right so remember interest rate simple interest rate is uh, principal times the rate times the number of years so we have a deposit of 4500 times 0 0.03 times 5 right so that's you got to remember i equals prt 4500 times 0 0.03 times 5 you're gonna make 675 dollars in interest. 62, the ratio of cows, and I like write it to chickens, is 2 to 11. If there are 143 cows, right, cows to chickens is to how many cows are on the farm? If there are 140, okay, so, and then we can get a total here. All right, one more line. The total right now of animals is 13. But that's not the question. The question is, what happens when the total is actually 143? How, how many of those 143 will be cows and how many of them will be chickens? So find the relationship here. 143 divided by 13 is 11. So it's times 11. So all you got to do, once you find that multiply, uh, the number that you multiply with, is multiply everything times 11. So 2 times 11 is 22. And 11 times 11 is 121. So there was how many cows in the farm? 22 cows. Okay, 63. So we have, there's a hike at 12 p.m. It's increasing in now to by 440 feet per hour. For five hours. So here's, I'll just make a number line. Here's zero. Here's where he started at negative 230 because it's below sea level. So I draw the ocean here. So he's uh, somewhere 230 uh, feet below sea level. And he always kneels height above sea level at 430. So if he does from 12. 430 that's four hours and a half so every hour he goes so one hour so we can write that one hour he goes 
230 feet. And then 4.5 hours, how much, how many feet would that be? We'll just cross multiply. So we have X and then 230 times four, no, 230 times four and a half, yeah. We get 1,035, which is not the answer with the, oh, what is his height above sea level? Okay, so he's gonna climb Where did I get 200? Oh, sorry. Apologies. Apologies. So every hour he goes 440 feet. Okay, so if he travels for four, because we want to know his where is he? So he's climbing 440 feet, another 440 feet, another 440 feet. He's doing that for five hours. But at 4 30 p.m., where is he? Well, 4 30 p.m. would be four and a half hours of climbing. And that would be x, which is what you want to find, how many x feet. So we multiply 440 times 4.5. That means he travel. he's going to go up 1,980. But that's not his location, right? So if you start at two, negative 230 and you go up 1,980, where do you end up? Well, 1,980 minus 230, he's going to end up at... 1,750 feet above sea level. 63, 65. How many integers between one and 400 are inclusive or multiples of three and seven? Okay, so um, inclusive. So let's see how many multiples of three there are. Um, let me write this. So we're gonna find the multiples of threes. Plus multiple multiples of threes plus multiples of seven, right? Minus whatever they have in common, which would be multiples of twenty-one, right? Because every twenty-one, so three and seven, right? The LCM is twenty-one. The next time uh, a number would be multiple of three and seven would be forty-two, and the next time after that would be sixty-three, and so forth and so forth. So. If we take 400 and divide it by 3, we get 3, 3, 9, and another 10 here. So 133 in them. There's 133 multiples of 3 plus multiples of 7. So 400 divided by 7, we get 1. Sorry, not 1. We get 5. 7 times 5 is 35. 5 left over. We have 57 because 7 times 7 is 49. We have remaining of 1. So there are 57 multiples of 7 from 1 to 400. We add that. And then multiples of 21. How many multiples of 21 are between 1 and 400? Um, we're going to do 400 divided by 21. So we're going to go once, 21, subtract, 190, and then 21 goes into 190. Nine times, let's see, nine times one is nine, nine times two is 18, yeah, I remember. So there are going to be 19 multiples of 21. So we're gonna subtract 19. 133 plus 57 is 190. Minus 19, we get 171. So that's your answer. 67. Again, just order of operations. Right, we get a little practice. If y is negative two, what's the value of x? Well, negative four, 94 plus x over 16, and we're gonna replace the y with negative two, so we get five times negative two plus two. Negative 94 plus x over 16 equals five times negative two is negative 10. Negative two plus two is negative eight. That's what we have right now. So. Easiest thing to do, put this over one and cross multiply. Cross multiply these two. 16 times eight, well, it's negative 128. And on the other side, negative 94 plus x times one, we do the distributive property. One times negative, nine, negative 94 is negative four. One times x is just x. We add 94 to both sides. And x equals 
34. Okay. 68. A beaker contains 75 millimeters of liquid composed of water and boric acid in the ratio of 16 to 1. So there's 16 water parts for every 9 boric acid. Okay? So, <clears throat> um, how much boric acid must be added to the beaker to make the ratio of one to one? Um, hang on. Add this if the total here is 25 but when the total is 75 right when the total is 75 this is a times 3 so times 3 this is 27 and then times 3 over here will give you 48 so currently right so this is what you have to find out first <clears throat> when there's 75 millimeters of water 48 of it is water, and 27 of it is uh, boric acid. Now, if, if you want the ratio one to one, right, so for every 48 water, you should have 48 boric acid. Well, you should add here um, 27 to 48. You should add 21. 21 parts of boric acid, if you add that, plus 21 you will get the same quantity of water, which is 48. Okay. 68, 70, where's 70? Okay. How many integer values, integer values of x satisfy the inequality? Negative five, less than two x minus three is less than one. So it has to be an integer. Um, well, let's solve this. Well, this is a compound inequality. Let me just write it here a little bit bigger. Negative 5 less than 2x minus 3 less than 1. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to get rid of the negative 3 and then the 2. Right? So to get rid of negative 3, we're going to do plus 3. And if we do plus 3 in the compound inequality, we have to do plus 3 on all the sides. So now we have negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Less than 2x because the 3 goes away. And 1 plus 3 is 4. Now, we want to isolate x, and we're going to divide this by 2, which means I divide everybody by 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. 2 divided by 2 is just x. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So think about it now. From negative 1, not including negative 1, right? So I'm going to put a number like negative 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2. So this is negative 1 and not shaded. 2 not shaded. How many integers are between these two circles? Well, 0 and 1. So there are a total of 2 integers. Remember, integers are your negative 2, negative 1, right? No fractions, no decimals. Your positives and your negatives, including 0. Your whole numbers and their negatives and their opposites. 70, we go to 71. So please remember that normally I have my other lot. I have my other laptop, and um, what do you call? I can actually screen record, but because I didn't bring my other laptop, I have to do it this way. Seventy-one. Memory foam is in the shape of a rectangular solid, measures six feet wide, so six feet wide, seven feet long, and six inches thick. Ah, uh, hang on a second. Six, seven, and six. So we can multiply these three numbers. So we got 42 times seven. Seven times four is 28, plus one is 29. Two. Oh, hang on, what did I do wrong? Rectangular solid, all right. 
here's my mattress. Six feet wide, okay, so let's call this six feet wide, seven feet long. And what's the volume? What am I missing here? Um, and six inches thick. Oh, oh, careful. Here's my mistake. And that's why it was darkened. Oh, careful. Right here, it's six inches thick. So this is seven feet. This is six feet. And this six inches is 0 0.5 feet. Okay. So it's 7 times 6 times 0 0.5, 51. No, okay, sorry, what am I doing? 7 times 6 times 0 0.5, which is 21. Okay, so I didn't pay attention to the uh, units. All right, so I changed everything to feet. <clears throat> Tricky. 71, 72. What is a 30, 30, 381st digit after the decimal point in the infinitely repeating decimal point? So again, it's going to be 14, 2, 8, 5, 7, 14, 2, 8, 5, 7, 14. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. So we're going to do groups of 6, right? So we're going to divide 381 by 6. And that's going to be uh, 6. 36. Bring down the 2. Bring down the 1. 318 <clears throat> and we got three left over so <clears throat> if you think about it let me I'm gonna write that down so it's repeating 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 so it's one four two eight five seven we have three left over which means so here is one four two so right here and if you multiply 63 times 6 that's 18, that's 378. So exactly at the end of the 63rd repeating group, right, this is your 378. This would be your 379, this would be your 380th digit, and this one would be your 381st digit. So our answer is F. <clears throat> 75, like I said, I like this test. Short chapter book has 65 pages and four chapters. The ratio of word pages to words is one. So every page, for every one page, there's 200 words. If there are 4,000 words in the first chapter alone, how many words are in chapter two, three, and four combined? Okay, so the first chapter, there's 4,000 words. So let's see how many pages right that equals to so again here's my proportion right I want to know how many pages equals to 4,000 words well 200 times 20 and then on top is obviously times 20 so chapter 1 is 20 pages um, which means the total book is 65 pages minus 20 pages from chapter 1 you have 45 pages left so Again, and we want to know how many words are com are left over, are combined in chapters 2, 3, and 4. Well, chapters 2, 3, and 4 has 45 pages. So, again, go back to your original ratio. One page is 200 words. All the chapters combined is 45 pages. It's just in this case, we need to find the number of words. Again, here's X. You can cross multiply if you like, or just find the relationship. So. 1 to 45 is times 45, and 200 would be times 45 again. So, times 45 is 9,000 words. 76. Um, what do you want 76? 76 is, what is the area of the unshaded region? Oh, okay, let's see. PQ is 5, so let me write that this is 5. Uh, and UVR is a right triangle, so that's a right triangle. PQ 
is 5, PS is 4, all right? What is the area of the total region? Uh, let's see, do I, and UV is 2. The area of the unshaded region, so we're looking for this area, this area, and the top area. That's what we're looking for, okay? Let me just take that out. Um, trying to think if there's a simpler way here. Well, the area of the triangle now, put it over here. The area of the triangle is easy because if that, that's two and the whole thing is five, so it's base times height divided by two. So this triangle is the base from S to R is the same as P and Q, so it's five and the height is two divided by two, which is just simply five. So the area of the triangle is five, and I'll, I'll draw the area of the shaded, and I'll write shaded triangle over here, and I'll sort of draw, draw like this. This is the shaded triangle. Another triangle, right? So the base again is five. So base times height divided by two, the base is five. The height is this guy here, right? The height is this, so it's times four divided by two. Five times four divided by two is simply 10. Now, I'm going to find the area of the rectangle. The area of the rectangle is easy because it's just 5. So, area of the rectangle is 4 times 5, which is 20. So, <clears throat> the area of this and this is the area of the rectangle minus the area of the shaded triangle, right? So the area of the rectangle is 20. The shaded area, which we just did, is 10. So that gives us 10. So this and this combined is 10. Plus the area of the triangle on top, 10 plus 5, we get 15. So there is your answer. 76, 79. Oh, okay. All right. So this is to me it's a Venn diagram let's see if I can draw one um, Sirios 117 people yes to do you like choco circles 223 said yes do you like fruity flakes so we have choco and fruity okay remember there's four numbers here 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 and here. Um, so far, I can't. 93 reply yes to both questions. So 93, that's the number in the middle. 93 people like both. So that 93 is going to help me out with this. It's going to help me out with that. So in the choco circle, I need to have 117 people. I already have 93. So 117 minus 93 gives me 24. So I can put that number in. In the fruity circle, I need 223 people. So 223 minus the 93 that are already there gives me 130. And then 33 said, I don't like any of those. So that's your complete Venn diagram. Now, to answer the question says, how many people participated in the surf survey? We, add, we just add all the numbers up. 24 plus 93 plus 130 plus 33. That's going to give us 283. Oh my god, I made, did I make a mistake here? 24. How many people participated in the survey? So what did I do wrong? So 93 in the middle, 117 minus 93 is 24, good. 223 minus 93 equals 130, good. 30 pe 30, 33 people said no to both questions, so 24 plus 93 plus 130 plus 33, 280. Oh, there you go. I think I added incorrectly. So there's my answer. That's 79. 80. 80 people said yes to both questions. I say internet surf for exactly four years. Her charge is one of one time installation fee, so she paid that for once plus a monthly fee. So every month she paid $35 per month. 
how many how much money did she spend on the internet service so this is the equation right she paid 130 bucks in the beginning so the thing is the free for the installation and then 35 dollars per month now four years it's 48 months i want to find the total plug that in over here so 130 that she paid and then she paid 35 dollars per month for 48 months so 35 times 48 plus 130, 1,810. Mm, 80, I mean 80, 82. 82, okay. 82, Z is an integer and 3Z is odd. So, okay, so if Z is an integer, and three times Z is odd. So think about it. If you multiply three times any of these numbers, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which of them will give you an odd number? Well, if you multiply by one, if you multiply by nine, if you multiply by five, if you multiply by seven, and you multiply by nine. So three times Z, right, to get an odd number, it means that it, were, it was either multiplied by one, by two, by three, Five by seven or by nine. How many even integers are between five z and five z plus six? Inclusive. So that's a z by the way. So if you take five, okay. If you now think about it, so we know that Z is one if it are these numbers, right? It could be any of these numbers. So if we take five and multiply by by one or by two or by three, sorry, by one or by three or by, uh, sorry, the two shouldn't be here, by three, by five, by seven or by nine, right? They all end up with the last digit being a five. That's five, 15, 25, 35, 45, right? So if it ends, so the last digit is five, and if you add six to it, so if you add five plus six, you get 11. So 15 plus six is 21. 25 plus six is uh, 31. 35 plus six is 41. 45 plus six is 51. So we end up going from a five all the way to something one, right? So between a number that ends up in five, right? And a number that ends up in five and goes all the way to a number that ends up so whether it's 15 16 15 to 25 to 11 15 to 21 25 to 31 40, uh, 45 to 51 right so between this number and this number how many even numbers so how many even numbers so if you, let's just stick to 15 15 the next number would be 16 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Let's use that as an example. So how many even numbers are between this and that? It'd be one, two, and three. It's a nice question. 85, oh, 85 is ready. What's the greatest prime factor of 546? Well, I would do a tree. Uh, let's see, two and 546 divided by 2 is 273. 273 is divisible by 3. So 273 divided by 3 is 91. 91, let's see, so that's a prime number. That's a prime number. Can we break 91? Not divisible by 2, not divisible by 3, not by 4, not by 5, not by 6, by 7? Yes, it is. 7 times 13 so that's a prime number and this is a prime number when you get to a prime number at the end it means that we can't break it anymore right so biggest prime factor is 13 so there we go 85 89 89 it's a commission question 12% of his sales is in commission. Commission 15,000 commission. 
what was his total sales. Well, so remember, commission is percent times the sales. That's how I like to remember. So we know how much he made in commission. He made 15900 What's the percent that he got? 12% or 0 0.2 times the sales. Now I want to isolate sales. So I'm going to divide this by 0 0.12 and I'm going to divide this by 0 0.12. So that goes away. So the sales is the quotient of that 15,900 divided by 0 0.12 and we get 132,500, okay? Uh, 92. 92 is the question right to the top right hand corner. <clears throat> so 92, uh, what have we said? What is the value of y? Well, we know this and this, right? It's, uh, it's 180. So we can find x first. So let's find x. So 3x minus 10 plus 2x minus 10 equals 180. 3x and 2x is 5x. Negative 10 and negative 10 is negative 20 equals 180. Plus 20 plus 20. 5x equals <clears throat> 5x equals 200. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. x equals 40. So now that's not the value of the angle. That's just what x is. So if we go over here and we plug it in on 3x minus 10, we get 3 times 40 minus 10, which is 120 minus 10, which is 110. So the value of this angle is 110, which makes this 70. <clears throat> now, if this is 110, guess what, guys? This is also 110. And this will be 70, and this will be 70. Now, the answer is 7. Another thing you could have done here is once you find out that that's 110 is extend this line, right? And then we have, right? So if that's 110, extend it, right? And what have we learned before? This is an interior angle. So if that's 110, guess what? This guy is 110, right? And if that's 110 vertical angles, that means that this is 110. If that's 110, this guy is 70 and this guy is 70, right? Transversals, you could have done that too. So again, you have different tools, means to approach this. 92, 98, 96, sorry. <clears throat> 96, what is the area of the is isosceles trapezoid? STUV graft on the XY plane above, okay? So two, four, six, eight. So this right here from here to here is four. Two and 10, so that means this is eight. And the height is from zero to four, so it means the height is four. So remember, trapezoid, area of a trapezoid is height times V1, base one plus base two divided by two. So we have that the height is 4, base 1, 8, base 2, the, eight, uh, the height of the, 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 the line above, 4. All that divided by 2. Well, 8 times 4 is, eight, sorry, 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 times 4 is 48. So we got 48 on the top divided by 2. Final answer is 24. Six is next. All I know is ninety six is next. All right. So somebody had D dollars. The amount decreased by twenty percent. If it decreased by twenty percent, that means that you're left with. All right. Let me just read the question first before I attack it. So uh, she had D dollars on, on on Tuesday. It decreased by twenty percent, and then another 10% Thursday. So by Friday, how much money was left? Well, if you start with D dollars and you take 20% away, that means you're left with 80% or 0 
right? You would multiply these two and you would, you know, if you knew what how this is your beginning amount, right? Beginning, and I spelled that wrong. Two ends, beginning amount. Let me write starting amount. D star stands for your starting amount. Right, so if you have whatever amount and you spent, you lost, 20, you spent 20%, you're left with this, right? 80% of your initial value. And then on Tuesday, whatever you have left over, you're gonna lose another 10. So whatever you have left over, which is currently represented by this, you're gonna multiply it by 0 0.9. Because if you took 10% away, that means you have 90% left over. Okay, so how much, what what percentage of D is the amount of money in Tasmia's bank account on Friday? Well, if you multiply 0 0.8 times 0 0.9, you get 0 0.72. So he's going to have 0 0.72 is what's left over of the original value represented by D. Final answer, H. 98. Where's 98? All right, so Tatiana Yoga Studio, she has two options. Play 150 per yoga class or 200 for unlimited. Uh, what's the minimum number of yoga classes? Tatiana must attend for option two to cost less than option one. So 1150 per class times C has to, so we want for option two to cost less than, less than option one, hang on a second. Uh, so how many times can you attend class by paying 1150? Okay, so that this is actually worth worth it, right? So, for example, if you t attend one class, obviously the unlimited price of paying two hundred a month is not worth it because you might as well just if you only attend one class, you pay eleven fifty. Why would you pay two hundred? What if you attended nine classes? So let's just play with this for a second. So if you attended nine classes that month, eleven fifty times nine, it give, equals $103.50. Okay, now, if that's all you attend, would you pay for the unlimited? No, because nine classes is still cheaper to just pay per class. So at what point is this, is this not uh, paying per class not the best choice? So 152, when is it going to be greater than 200. Well, if we divide both sides by 1150, number of classes, in order for that to be greater than 200, 200 divided by 1150, you have to take, it says 17.39, so, but you can't take, so at 70, if you take 17 classes, so let's look what the, that answer means. If you take 17 classes, so let's do 1150, times 17. 11.50 times 17 is $195.50. So if you take 17 classes, it's still better to pay it by the class, not the unlimited version. But if you take 18 classes, and let's do that, it's 207. So anything above 18 and more you're better off taking option two. So there is your answer. Okay, so it's nice to understand that one. A hundred. A truck is traveling at 1,256 feet per minute. Oh, this is a nice problem. Okay, so the truck travels at 1,256 1, feet per minute. Now here's a wheel of the truck, okay, and the truck has a diameter, the wheel has a diameter, the 
diameter is 4. Okay, which of the following is the closest number of revolutions each wheel completes in one minute? So, how many times will this wheel spin, right, to get to 1,256? That's what we have to find out. Well, every spin, right, every time this wheel spins, it travels the circumference of the circle. So let's find the circumference, c equals pi times d, c equals pi, and the uh, diameter is 4. So c equals 4 pi. Now, it says approximately, so pi, we're going to actually have to multiply this, so 4 times pi, which is 3.14159. So I know sometimes I say pi use 3.114. I personally tell my kids to use 3.14159, right? A little bit, and a few more decimals. Well, more decimals, the more precise your answer. So that's going to give us 12.56. And I know this is on your specialized high school test, so you might be you might be able to get away with 314. Um, let's use that and see what happens. So pi, let's use pi equals 3.14, even though it doesn't say it. So uh, four times 3.14, that means that every time the circle, no, sorry, the tire goes one revolution, it travels 12.56. It's a big tire, okay? Um, so how many times must the wheel spin in order to reach 1,256? Well, That's what you have to do. 1,256 divided by 12.56, and here's your answer. 100, so 100 uh, revolutions. Nice little problem too. So quite a nice, a lot of nice problems in this particular test. 102 and then 103, so just 102. Sean is N years younger than Gabby. And one third as Luis. If Luis is 39, how old is Gabby? So Sean is n years younger than Gabby. So whatever Gabby is, minus n. Okay. Uh, and, and and Sean is one third of Luis. But we know what Luis is. Luis is 39. So that makes Sean 13 years old. So, oops. So if you plug this in, now that we know what Sean is, we can go back to this equation, right? Which says Sean is n years younger than Gabby, so whatever Gabby is minus n, we can s replace s with 13, and then we can isolate Gabby. We can do plus n. We can do plus n on this side. N, pl n plus negative n, sorry, plus n. That goes away. So Gabby, and remember 13 plus n, they're not like terms. So in terms of Gabby, um, her age is 13 plus n. Okay? 102, 103. If J is Q over R, what's K divided by J? So we're looking for K divided by J. So that's what we want. So it's better off, instead of writing it like that, writing it as a fraction. So let's replace K. They tell us that K is S over T. Over, what's, uh, what do you call What's uh, J? J is Q over R. Now, this is a division, right? So again, if you're dividing fractions, we're going to keep the first fraction, change the division to multiplication, and we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of Q over R. And the reciprocal of QR is RQ, right? 
multiply the top, S times R is SR or RS, let's do it alphabetically, and T times Q is just QT. There is your answer. So for me, this question here is A, changing this and writing it as a fraction. So it's gonna be a complex fraction, right? It's gonna be a fraction over a fraction. And then when dividing two fractions, remember, right? We're gonna change the, the division to multiplying the reciprocal of the second fraction. Okay, that was the key, right? So um, 104. A drink mix, okay, so ice contains iced tea, lemonade. So iced tea and lemonade in the ratio of three to two. So for every three ice parts of iced tea, there's two parts lemonade. How many fluid ounces of lemonade are in three gallons? So three gallons, so we want the answer in fluid ounces. So three gallons, is, one gallon is 128 fluid ounces. So times three, 24 goes two, three, six, eight. There are 384, what do you call, 384 uh, ounces. So right now, three parts IT, iced tea to two parts lemonade, that makes it a total of five parts. Right? So when we have 384, I'll write total and stuff parts. We have 384. How much of it will be lemonade and how much of it will be iced tea? Well, we have to find, and again, I like the proportion because now it's super easy, right? So five times what is 384? Well, Let's do it like you would do it on your test. 384 divided by 5 would be 7, 35, 3, 34, 6, 30, 4. We'll just bring a 0 down, and 5 goes into 40 and 8. So the multiplicative is 76.8. And we're going to multiply this by 76.8. We'll multiply this by 76.8. All right, so if we multiply, let's do the first one, 76.8 times 3. We get, well, oh, 76.8 times 3, we get 230.4, change colors. And then we can have 76.8 times 2, we get 153.6, and that's our answer. Okay, a lot of moving parts in these questions today, a lot of moving parts, which makes them nice. 104, 107. Okay, so. Another circle question. A, we have a dartboard. Imagine a dartboard. And the diameter, the whole diameter is 42. So I'll write 42 over here. And so D, diameter is 42 of that circle. And right in the center of the bullseye, there's another circumference, right? So if you ever play darts, and a circle was a circumference. So the circumference here, so this is circumference is 2 pi. Right, so how many square inches of the part are not in the ball? So they're asking us, what's this? What's this area? Right, so imagine a donut, right? We're, we're figuring out the area of the donut without the hole in the middle. Well, let's find out the area of the big circle, right? So we know diameter is 42. If the diameter is 42, the radius, so the diameter is 42, the radius, and I'll make a radius here, is 21. So A equals pi r squared. A equals pi, and then we have 21 to the second power, which is 441 pi. So area equals 441, and we're going to leave it in terms of pi. Pi 
high, 41 point inches. Okay, so that's the area of the whole circle. So the whole circle has an area of 441 pi inches squared. Now we're gonna, we, so we have the circumference, right? Circumference equals two pi. So how do we find, how can I use that to find the radius? Because I don't know what the radius is. Well, uh, circumference is pi d, right? We can use this formula or circumference is two pi r. Because we want the radius, let's use the bottom one. If you use the top one, that's fine too. All you gotta do is divide it by two at the end. So we, they're telling us that the circumference is two pi, so I can change the circumference and write two pi equals two pi r, right? So <clears throat> I wanna find what the radius is, so I wanna isolate r, so I can divide this side by two pi and divide this side by two pi. That goes away, that goes away, well, it doesn't go away actually. Two pi divided by two pi is one, so the radius is one. So the radius of the first, of the circle in the middle is one. Now that I know the radius, I can find the area. Area equals pi times one to the second power, one to the second power is one times pi. So area of the little circle there is pi inches squared. So now we gotta subtract this guy over here, right? The area of the big, cir big circle minus the area of the small circle. So the area of the big circle is 441 pi minus the area of the small circle, which is pi. And that just equals to 400 and pi. So if you have 441 pi and I take one pi away from you, this is what you have left over. B. 108. If P is a multiple of four, which of the following must also be a multiple of four? Well, multiples of four, right? So it's plus four, plus four, plus four, plus four, plus four. So if I multiply four times two, I get eight. And if I add that plus three, uh, sorry, if I add that times three, is it going to give me a multiple of four? No, I have to add four to it, right? So whatever I multiply four by, right? Whenever I multiply this P, is, P represents any number. Uh, that's a multiple for 8, 12, 16, 12. So let's, I mean, let's two times four. If you add three, you get 11. No, it doesn't work. Two times, if you wanna use the number eight, fine. It's a multiple of four, right? Two times eight, 16 plus three. No, it doesn't work. So this, when you add, right? It has to add a number. It has to be plus four or a, or a again, a multiple of four. So that's not gonna work. Three times p, well, use four. Let's just keep using four. Three times four is 12, plus six, 18. Is that a multiple of four? No. Four times four, 16, plus nine, 25. Is that a multiple of four? No. Last one, five times four is 20, plus 12, 32. Is 32 a multiple of four? Yeah. Well, let's, let's pick another one. Let's pick 16. Five times 16 is 80, plus 12. 92, is that a multiple of four? Yes, it is. 92 divided by four is 23. Okay, so if you don't wanna use four and you're more comfortable with eight, 12, pick any multiple of four, right? That would've worked. So that's H. <clears throat> no, nine. I don't know why I picked one nine, what is this? Church above displays of surveys from 16,500 households. How many households survey have at most two pests? At most two pests, it, it can't be more than two. So these guys are gone, the, four, the people who have four pets, and these guys are gone. So we care about this, this, and this. So what is that percentage wise? 17 plus 19, 43 plus 17 plus 19. Ugh. I'm cheating because I'm using a calculator. So that's 79%. So at most two pests would be these three groups, which is 79%. And then we actually want to know. So what's 79% of 16,500? Well, 0. 0.79 times 16,500. It 
13,035. So there's your answer. <clears throat> One, I have no idea. One ten is next. Yeah. So, how many integers are both in set L and M? Well, the integers that are that exist here and here. Well. 57 is in, uh, let's see, it would be from 91, right? So if you go, 57 is not in the in, in set M. 58 is not, 59 is not, 60 is not. But when you get to 91, 91 exists. 91 is in set L, right? And 91 is also here. So starting from 91, right? 92 also are, in, are exists in both sets, 93 all the way to 118. So all the numbers from 91 to 118 are in this set and are on this set. So how many numbers are that? Well, all you gotta do is 118 minus 91, and we have to add one because it's inclusive. Okay, so let's do 118 minus 91. Um, enter plus one, we get 28. And, and the reason we add one, and let me see, let me see if I can give you an example. Let's say 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So imagine these numbers for now. And I asked you how many numbers are there? Well, you would go 20 minus 15, and you say, well, there's five numbers. That's not true, right? From 15, including 15 and including 20, how many numbers are here? You just don't subtract. You, do, you subtract highest minus the lowest, and you always want to add one if it's inclusive, right? Because let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six numbers. 20 minus 15 is five, plus one equals six. So if I asked you how many numbers are from 58 to 99, well, you would do 99 minus 58, and then you would add one, and that would be 42 if it says inclusive right starting how many numbers are starting starting from 58 and ending 99 how many numbers are here okay um 110 112 oh 112 is right here let me just bring it up a little bit Ugh. Pyramid has a square base, okay? So if we know a square, all the sides are the same at the bottom. The volume is 196. The pyramid has a square base and a volume of 96. The volume of the pyramid, so volume of a pyramid, it's one third area of the base times the height. So this is area of the base. Area of the base times the height. Uh, and H refer if the length of AD, so if this is seven, which means this is seven, and this is seven, and this is seven, okay. Um, what is the height of the pyramid? So H is what we're gonna look for. So volume, they give to us 196. One third, area of the base. Well, the base is a square, right? It says square base. So a square, the area of a square is just side times side, seven times seven is 49. And H is what we're trying to find. Okay, so <clears throat> 196 equals, and then let's combine these two. We get 49 over three, H. And to isolate H, we're gonna multiply this by three over 49, and we're gonna multiply this by three over 49. That and that, that and that, all simplified to one. And on the other side, we can do 196 times three divided by 49, and we get 12. H equals 12. Okay. Um, yeah. What do we have here? One. 113, okay? 
x and y are consecutive even integers with a product 1 68. So where x is greater than y, if x is decreased by 1 and y is divided by 2, what is the product of the two resulting integers? Well, first of all, we got to find two consecutive even integers with a product of 168. Yikes. So 168. Let's go through all the numbers that multiply, giving 168. Well, 1 and 168. 2 and 84. Um, 168 is divisible by 3, so it's 3 and 56. 168 is divisible by 4, so it's 4 and 42. 5 doesn't go, 6 is 28, so 6 and 28. Let me put commas here. 7. Um, 7, did we do 7? No, 168 divided by 7 is 20, so 7 and 24 works. Uh, 8, 8 also works. It's 8 and 21, so I'll put 8 and 21. That's not what we want. 9, 9 doesn't work, 10 doesn't work, 11, 168 divided by, 168 divided by, 12? No. Yeah. So 12 times 14 all goes. So there we go. I found it. Two even integers with a product of 168 where x is greater than y, which is greater than 0. So 14. Let me see. Is there another one? Hang on a second. 14, 16. Uh, 16, 16. No, I think it's 12 and 14. So if it's 12 and 14, and if you subtract, uh, and x is greater for consecutive even integers with a product 168, where x is greater than y, which is greater than y, zero. So this is x and this is y. So if I take x and take one from it, right? It says if x is decreased by one, which gives me 13, and y is divided by two, which gives me six, what is the product of the two resulting integers? We get 6 times 13, which is 78. Okay. Um, let me just double check. 4, 12, 12, 14, 14, 18. Let me just try another one. No, that is it. So the answer is 78. Okay. I don't think this one, actually, but I really like this one.